Hello everybody, how is everybody doing today? My name is Johanna Kuman and I work as a style master for Kevin Murphy. Uh, today, what I was thinking that would be quite exciting to show you guys is uh, three different versions, uh, versions of the same set. So I'm gonna set the hair with a large iron now and then I'm, I've actually pre-done the same set with a medium iron and a small iron so we can explore three different finishes at least on these three mannequins. So I would advise if you have uh, medium to thick hair you would use the large iron just to save some time and if you have fine to medium hair then you would be using your medium iron. How does that sound? Uh, what do you think, Tim? Are we good to go? Should we wait one more minute for people or are we all here? I would wait just a minute, Yuha, and maybe when you're demonstrating, maybe you bring your bottle closer to the camera. Okay, cool. Perfect. So let me see. Is this better? Or are we losing the light? Um, that's good, Yuha. Okay, great. Just here. Perfect. So, hello everybody, I can see some people popping into the uh, setting live now. So, as I said before, I've actually pre-done two mannequins for you with a small iron and a medium iron. And now I'm going to do a large iron on this one. It's completely the same set for all the three mannequins, but just a little variation. So, I thought that it would be a nice idea so we can see as many finishes as possible today. I hope you like that. Perfect. So. Basically, what we've done for our Nadine today is that I put a little bit of anti-gravity into the hair already, but if you have your brushes and combs with you there, we will start to apply a second layer of the anti-gravity spray. So it's really important when you actually start to apply the products, is that you apply section by section. And my own favorite way to apply the products is to start from the front because I already start to curl from the front as well. So that's the best way because then the hair is already dry when you start to curl the hair. So section by section and I love to do horizontal sectioning. I think that's the best way to actually apply the product throughout the hair. So I go from top and bottom and then I still comb the hair through just to get an even distribution of the product. I think that's super important as you want to really envelop the hair with the product to get the most um, uh, staying power for your sets. So is everybody ready and geared up with their tools? So as I said before, if your hair is from fine to medium, you might want to use your medium iron, but if your hair is from medium to thick, you might want to go with your larger iron, just so that we don't spend up too much time prepping the hair today. But I've actually prepped two more mannequins for you, so you can see how the finish is different depending on the size of the iron. The set that I'm going to do today is one of my absolutely favorite sets that I always like to do just because you can vary it so much. And it's such a versatile set that will give you so many different finishes depending on your chosen tools and products for the finish. So now I'm going to move on to the back of the head and still section by section we go and apply the product. and seal comb the product through the ends, lengthen the ends. Hey you, how we have a question. Can you remind everyone what product you're using right now and why? Yes, perfect. So I'm actually using our anti-gravity spray to set the hair. Just because it's a short chain styling polymers and it actually builds up that volume and uh, I would say that required grip for the hair as well. I already put some uh, heated defense underneath, of course, prior. So you can do that if you feel like there's a need for it. And uh, yeah, just easy. What I might want to show to you guys how I applied my heated defense because I didn't actually wash the hair today with the mannequins. So one of my favorite ways to apply 
the heated defense is actually pumped to mousse into my brush as so and then you can just brush the product into the hair and I can feel many times that the heated defense is actually helping me to set the hair because it evens out the porosity of the hair and of course protects the hair from the external heat so you can see we get an even uh, uh, distribution of uh, heated defense in this way and this is a very good tip for you guys if you really are not having all the time in the world to prep the hair from the basin I think in ideal world I would always uh, start prepping from the basin again if I want if I would want some volume for the hair I would again start with angel wash and rinse and if, uh, if I wanted to have more of a smooth effect I would go with the smooth again products so here now we're almost done uh, the product into the hair and as you can see today the texture of the hair is a little bit on the straighter side so I wouldn't blow dry the hair too much before this sets because I do not want to stretch the hair prior to curling off the hair but if your hair is very curly and very textured what you want to do is of course blow dry the hair smooth because you don't want to texture spatteling in the hair if you're creating a set. There you go. And now we have applied the product throughout the whole of the hair. I'm going to grab my trusty smoothing brush just to go once more uh, through the hair and just to mix all the products and uh, get an even canvas to work on. I think that's very important as we want to be working of course very precisely and beautifully there you go and as I said before I think it's a great idea for you to use a large iron if you have a medium to thick hair so that's what I'm going to do today so I'm just going to pre-section behind the ears and I'm actually starting from underneath going up now because I'm not going to clip this hair. This is the, uh, I would say, the softest version of this set, so we do not want to clip the hair. You can see on the two other uh, mannequins that I've really done is that when we clip the hair, the clipping of the hair when the hair is cooling down is actually giving more staying power for the set. But here, because we want to do very soft, I would say very summery, easy going, easy breezy hair, I'm not going to clip it. So it is just a very fast and salon friendly version of this look. So here we go. Again, I'm working in a horizontal sectioning and I would say the thickness of the iron. And that's also very important because then we don't get any weird elevation on the hair or snagging of the hair that we don't want. One really important hey, you, uh, we have a, we have yeah. a question uh, from Jamil. What happens if you overuse both products, heated defense and anti-gravity spray, or is that even possible? Um, I haven't come across a situation where I actually could overuse the product because they are so lightweight. And many times I even like to layer them more and more. Of course, when you actually start applying uh, heated defense, for example, with the brush, when you go section by section, you will see what will be enough of the product. But again, anti gravity, sometimes I even do three to four layers if the hair is very glassy. So I wouldn't say that there is a possibility of overusing those two products. Very important here when we start to curl the hair is that the hair is curled on base. So remember on base, which means that then you always have to comb the section before you start curling. This is also very important because we do not want to heat up any tangles in the hair, which will make our life a lot harder later on. And I would say that pay attention to the position of my hands. So I'm actually clamping the hair between my index and middle finger, and you will keep this, uh, your fingers like this the whole time, because the roots are going to be flat wrapped and the ends are going to coil. So that will actually boost natural movements and more volume into the hair. So again, flat wrap, and then it's, the hair starts to coil on its own. I think this is a very important thing to remember, because you do not want to uh, 
or you want to have that beautiful natural movement. So then, especially when the hair is coiled, you can see here, it is important that we actually try the hair on top of the coiled sections of the hair so that we can see that the heat has gone through the whole of the section. Because if we don't do that, of course, if we don't heat up the hair properly, the set is not going to hold and it's not going to be uniform. So I think that's a very important thing to remember. It will take a little bit longer time to actually heat up because I'm only using 180 degrees Celsius and uh, 319 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. So it's not that high of a heat. And then I just like to shake the curl a little bit in my hands before letting it drop. So there you go. And I think for the sides, because we're using such a large iron, we can go with three sections. And now you can really see when we start from underneath, that it's actually making our life a little bit easier when we are not using clips. So not any of the hair is not actually gonna come on our way. Hey Yuha, we have a request on on the next section. Could you could you move your model just a little bit closer so they can actually see your flat wrapping and then how it coils? Let me see, did we lose the light now actually? Let me see if I can put some more lights here. Just a second. Now you can see it better maybe. So here we go. So flat wrapping and coiling. So as I said, very important is that you actually comb the hair into the position. So it's gonna be on base. And then you're gonna hold the horizontal section of the hair between your middle and index finger, like so. And then it starts to go flat wrap, but then when you move on further, the hair starts to coil. Can you see it better now? I hope so. Also, what is really uh, good to remember is that do not curl the ends at this point yet because they are the most fragile part of the hair. Therefore, they do not need so much of the heat. And again, you can actually go and motorbike the roots a little bit. You can see the motion that I'm doing here. So it doesn't create a very harsh dent on the hairline and it's gonna be a lot easier to style later on. There you go, and just a little bit longer. And then on the very end, when we're done, when the coiled section has actually properly heated up, then you will go and then wrap the ends for just a couple of seconds. And then you can drop the section. I'm gonna move a little bit more back because I think we're losing the light a little bit. I hope that's okay. That's great, Eva. Okay, perfect. And then again, when we move on to the top of the hair, or the top of the head, uh, again, be very precise with your direction of combing. And also here, when you start to curl the front of the hair, I think it's really important to remember that you're actually lifting the hair up so it goes 90 degrees from the hairline out. Because if you curl the hair here, it's not gonna create the desired effect and the face framing that we actually want to happen on the front of the hairline or the, on the face. So we're still in the picture, 90 degrees out from the hairline, as so. And then we can start to wrap the hair around the iron. And again, flat and then it coils. So how are we doing guys? Are you enjoying working on this set today? I hope there's many of you actually who grab your tools out and really are doing the set with me because I think it's always easier to actually remember what we've done when we've actually done it. But again, if you're only just watching the sets, I think one of my main goals that I really wanted to reach today is that many people are actually a little bit afraid of setting off the hair. They think it's very complicated and uh, it can be too much of a trouble. So I wanted to showcase you today that it's actually not that difficult. It's very easy. And then giving you one set with different sizes of irons, all the looks that you can actually get. So I think that's gonna be hugely beneficial for you. So let's see here. Okay. 
almost there. This is, I think, is the thickest section of the hair on this mannequin, so it just takes a little longer. And then again, when it's heated up, I just wrap the ends for a couple of seconds. Hold in your hands a little bit, and then you just let it drop. And then I'm gonna move on to the other side. This is also a great practice, uh, just to start trying to be more, I would say, ambidextrous with your settings. So you're actually gonna now switch your iron to your other hand. So if you're right-handed and you're, then you're moving on to the right side of the head, it can be a little bit more challenging because you actually have to hold the iron in your left hand. So beware not to burn yourself. Many times that actually happens when you hold the iron in your other hand than you're used to. And again, you can see I'm combing with the elevation. So I will have the curl on base, holding it between my index and middle finger, and then it starts to coil again. Are you how we have a question? Yeah. Um, would you, do you typically, are you kind of counting in your head for each section before you move on based on the desired amount of curl that you like? Well, that's a really good question. So do I count in my head for the desired amount of curl that I want? I actually, what I find a bulletproof method on setting the hair in a very good way is just to put my finger on top of the hair and feel like when it starts to be too hot for the finger, uh, then I know it's too hot for the hair or getting too hot for the hair. So then we know that we actually evenly heated up the whole section of the hair because every hair type takes the heat a little bit differently and uh, yeah, but also as you can see today, I prepped two mannequins for you guys. So we prepped one with a small, small iron and the one with medium. And now this one is gonna be done with the large iron. So I would say that I would always go depending, okay, so depending on the amount of curl that I want, I would choose my tools. And also the thickness of the section. So many times what we see that people do a little bit I would say not in the best practice is that they will actually do too large of sections for the size of the iron because you just want to speed up and get your job done faster but if you would do this large of a section I would say on a half an inch iron you are not setting yourself up for success I think that's a really important thing to remember because yeah you're just gonna make your life a lot harder Especially if you're coiling the hair and you apply a thick section on a small iron, it takes forever to heat. And then you might have to use uh, higher heat that you would want to or that is recommended. Yuha, we have a couple of other questions. So the first one is from Coco. Yeah. Um, they usually curl with session spray flex. What difference will anti-gravity spray give me when curling? Will it last longer possibly? I think that's a great question. So we see where, um, because Kevin Murphy products are so versatile, so many people like to use them in different ways. I would always advise that we use uh, styling products for curling off the hair because they are meant for setting. So when you can think about anti-gravity spray, for example, there is an adequate amount of moisture in the product. So that will actually allow us to reposition the salt bonds of the hair. Versus when you can think about session spray flex, uh, that is a finishing product. So it won't, it won't apply that moisture into the hair. So you are not actually um, setting the internal structure of the hair in a different position. Uh, I hope that answered your question. Yes, it did. Johan, we have another one. Do yeah. what uh, people would like to know what, what iron or what tong you're using. So the tong that I'm using today is actually my traveling tong. So it is called HDD. And uh, it's just a very easy one for me to travel with because you can actually switch the head. So I think that's a great tool for traveling work that I usually do. Of course, now that I haven't been traveling so much. Uh, it's a little different, but uh, yeah. There you can see again, lift 90 degrees from the hairline. Again, so you are not creating that dent in, in there. So you will still get that beautiful face frame. 
Okay. How are we doing, guys? Everybody happy with the set so far? I think we're, we're very well with the timing, so now we're 20 minutes in. So this is actually a very fast set. And as I said today, my model has a huge amount of hair, so it takes a little bit longer, but uh, it's a very salon-friendly technique if you want to use them. Many times people actually like to do curls with a straightening orange, and of course that's possible as well. But what I feel like that makes a huge difference when setting the hair with actually a curling iron or a curling tongue is that it will get that bounce that is impossible to get uh, when you're using a flat iron. <clears throat> because basically if you use flat iron to curl the hair, what you're telling the hair first is that I want for you to be straight and flat, but then at the same second you're telling the hair, oh I want for you to be curly. So, of course, it will work as well, but I think this is a little bit of, um, I would say that it will give that bounce to the hair that you might lack if you're using your straightening iron to form the curls. Okay. So, here we have it. So, just a couple of more seconds. And as you can see, I'm actually placing my hands and my fingers on top of the hair. So even though the product is evaporating from the hair a little bit, you know that you are still not doing any harm for the hair because your fingers will, of course, tell you first if you're applying too much of heat. Okay, great, there we go. Now I'm going to move on to the back of the hair. And again, starting from underneath. But what we're going to do now because there is so much hair on the back of the hair, I'm just going to pre-section a little bit. So I'm going to pre-section the top. I would say a little bit above the occipital bone away. So we will get more of a control and we don't have too much hair uh, in front of us. Great stuff. And I love how when you see, for example, how the heated defense actually smooths out the ends and brings this certain shine for the hair as well at the same time, it's just because it evens out the porosity of the hair. And I think for a truly successful style, and um, truly successful style, and something that actually separates a perfect set from a, from a good set, is that you actually work step by step and you really pay attention to all the steps of the set that you really want to think about. For example, again, evening out the porosity of the hair will give more shine uh, than just applying a shine product in the very end. So Are you hot? If you wanted to create more volume as a desired finish, would yeah. you recommend using the Kevin Murphy curlers to leave in the set? That is also a great idea. So the idea about Kevin Murphy curlers, you can always use them as well, and they will apply more volume for this specific set, for example, just because um, when you, for example, start to curl the hair, and then you heat up the hair, I hope you can see here, what I'm doing is, that I'm actually going and applying a little bit of tension onto the hair as well. So you can see. So what happens now is that when we apply heat and tension into the hair at the same time, we're actually expanding the length of the hair. Then when we apply a Kevin Murphy roller into the hair, when the hair cools down, it actually wraps around the rollers or the Kevin Murphy curlers, and therefore you will get even more bounce to the hair. So that's a great idea to use your Kevin Murphy uh, curlers or rollers rolls into the hair, sorry. So that's a, definitely a good idea. Just because I don't use them today uh, is because I want for the hair to be more languid and falling down almost. So I do not want so much volume onto this specific type of look. Great, and again, hold the hair in your hands for a couple of seconds for to allow the most heat to cool down. And now on the back you would be switching your hands all the time because you really want to actually direct all of the hair towards the face. So as you saw in the front as well, why I switch my hands is because I want all the ends to drive towards the face. 
Uh, in the world of nowadays, people are really thinking about how they look in the pictures and it doesn't matter so much at the given time how the hair looks from the back. So we really want to put the full emphasis on the front. Of course, if you really want to have the hair looking glorious all over, what you can do is then do a bricklay pattern to the back and then do a layer by layer, uh, directing one layer to the right and the other layer to the left. So then you will get the best blend onto the back of the hair as well. Hey you, do you decide how many sections you would like to take in the back? So again, depends on the thickness of the hair. And as you can see, I like to work with even thickness sections. So it really all boils down to the distribution of the hair of our model or our mannequin today. And um, again, um, so the distribution of the hair in the head. And uh, yeah, mostly try to work with the um, sections no wider than the iron. Okay, now I'm going to curl the ends. There you go. Just wait a second. And then you can let it drop. So I think we have like five more sections to go. And how are we with the timing? So it's 25 past. So I think we're going to make it. I can show you everything that I wanted to show you today. So now... While you're setting, while you're setting you, Hawk, could you, could you help us understand what you've learned throughout your career about the importance of setting? Yes. So when I started actually hairdressing, I was, um, I would say that I was the one who loved to do curls with the straightening iron as well. I think it was because it was all the craze as well those days. And uh, we did use a lot of hot rollers and all that. But what I learned so far with my career uh, especially with Kevin Murphy, the importance of setting up the hair is that when you actually build a base strongly with the right choice of products and tools is that you're going to set yourself up for success. And I think when you really pay attention to the setting of the hair, it will take a lot of the work later on off your hands. So basically what will happen is that you do not have to redo the set throughout the day, especially if you're working on a set. But what it also means is that your clients are going to be more happy because they will get more durability out of their set. If you really do a proper work with the sets, and of course there won't be any drastic weather conditions, the clients can actually wait to have the set in their hair until the next time they wash. Again, of course, depending on the uh, usage of, and the right usage and the choice of products and um, the tools as well, of course. So, yeah. Uh, you have a couple of more questions. So, first question is, would you go up a size on the, the size tong you're using in the back? Or in this situation, do you prefer to use the same size all the way around? Yeah. Again, if you really want to have more language and you want the waves to drop through the back a little bit more, you can always use a size larger iron. Uh, I want to go more for more of a uniform set that I can really work and I can trust this set to work exactly the same way throughout the whole hair, then I wouldn't. But if you just want to have the nice languidness and the waves to even kind of a drop through the back of the hair, you can always go with a larger size iron through the back. And uh, another question, um, you have, it's kind of funny, I know you're in Finland, but is there like a big storm or something in the background? Because we keep hearing like a rumbling. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. There is actually a little construction work. I think they can explode the, what do you call the ground now? That there is no people in the city at all. <laughs> so sorry about that. I hope you can still hear what I'm saying. You, we can. We were just concerned that you might be in a blizzard and we wanted you to be warm. No, 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 no. It's actually a super beautiful day today. It's like very sunny and 12 degrees Celsius outside. So it's beautiful, beautiful weather. Great weather for gardening as well. But uh, yeah, not to worry about me. I'm still all okay. <laughs> thank you. For, thank you though. Okay. Any more questions, guys? We're all good, you have. Okay, great. So I know it takes a little while to set the hair and it's not the most 
exciting thing to watch, but I really wanted to have the time and go through this set with you all today. So you will get the most out of it. But as I said before, I actually have two more mannequins prepped for you. So then we can actually start going a little bit faster and have more uh, stuff to do in a few minutes. So after this section, I have two more sections to go and then we're good to start the finishing part of the day. Okay. Hey, you have another question. Is there a reason that you're curling the top sections first in the back? Is it just for ease or is there another reason? Oh, the underneath sections, you mean. So I started from the underneath again, just so I can move up because again, I'm still not using any clips. So if I curl the top sections first, I might have a little bit of hair on my way when I'm moving to the underneath sections. And here, what I want for you to pay attention to, and I think maybe you can see now, is that I want to do a little zigzag section on the top, just to actually uh, prevent the splitting of the hair on the end. And the top section I will always curl to the same direction, so that it won't split. These two sections more, and then we're good to start finishing the hair. And again, you can see that the ends coil and the roots are flat right. And also, what this does for the hair, it will lay flat beautifully around the head, and uh, then we'll get more expansion when we move on to the lengths and ends. And you will see exactly what I mean by that when I start brushing the hair out. Okay. It is actually quite loud, the rumbling noise. So it sounds it's like, quite, It's quite hilarious. It's quite hilarious, yeah. It is like there was a little avalanche or a blizzard here. That's true. But nothing to worry about. I will still be setting hair with you for many, many times to come. <laughs> And remember, as I said, apply a little bit of tension onto the set on the sections that you're curling. And that is super important because when you come to imagine doing a perm, for example, you also want to apply tension there because then we can actually better and um, change the structure of the hair a little bit stronger, if that makes sense. So, Yuha, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. I know from experience that that you end up creating um, a lot of the sets that we see throughout um, the Kevin Murphy Education Collections. Where do you find your inspiration time after time? Yeah, thanks for putting me on spot, Tim. <laughs> well, what I actually, it is inspiration comes from many sources, of course. And what I like to do is I like to look at vintage advertisements and uh, movies as well. And I always try to think about how to bring them to the world of nowadays. So many times it could be as simple as switching your iron to a larger size. If you can see that the sets are done with a very small iron. Could be just that you want to change the direction of some of the sections just to create a different face frame. But uh, yeah. But it also could come from street culture many times. Sometimes you see these very interesting people walking on the streets and then you wonder, oh, wonder what they did to their hair to make it look like that. Um, I think it's just about because inspiration can come from so many sources. So, yeah, I don't even know, really, to be honest. <laughs> That's great. We have, a, we have a product question, you have. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, and you may discuss this when you're finishing some of your models, yeah. but what is the difference for you between touchable and bedroom hair and when would you choose one over the other? That's a really good question. So bedroom hair for me is a product that contains uh, moisturizing ingredients quite a bit. So it uh, in, uh, includes an ingredient called glycerol, which can bind moisture into the hair. So I always see bedroom hair being a perfect product for a little bit more textured I would say dry hair, or not in the yeah, not in the texture, but in the um, feeling like it loses all the moisture. So it's good to bind the moisture into the hair and bring the most definition on that kind of that type of a hair. And then touchable, of course, when it's a finishing, it's like a dry spray wax. 
it will fit also to many different types of hair and I would say that it's outstanding for even that for long even straight hair that doesn't uh, have that problem of lacking moisture if that makes sense so bedroom hair for the hair that actually lacks moisture and is losing moisture very easily and then touchable for different types of hair and of course many people like to bring in dew over for this conversation as well but do already contains tapioca starch it's actually a beautiful product to act expand the spaces between the hair and make them bigger so it actually is great for bringing that fullness and volume but i will be using all um to do over and touchable today on the finishing of the hair and i might use some bedroom hair as well because i have it here so we will explore them more in a second but i will actually put this uh, mannequin on the side now and i'm going to start dressing out my mannequin that i actually did with a medium size iron just a second so here is our other model and she had even more hair on her head and uh, uh, we used a medium iron so I wanted to do this prior because it would have taken 45 minutes instead of 30 minutes so here what I want to do now is actually start from underneath and start brushing the hair open so as you can see I used clips here to make the hair cool and then you will have more spring and bounce into the hair as you can see so I think that's a great idea again if you really want to make your sets have more of a durability and staying power so here we go and again this was set on a medium iron so I would say the iron would be two and a half centimeters thick so that would be again around one inch if I'm doing my conversions right, I hope. So there you go. I'm gonna have to these sections here as well. You have another product question. Would yeah. you ever use freehold to finish or dress out a set if you want softness and sheen? Freehold? Well, even though I love freehold a lot, I would in that special case go with Easy Rider. Sometimes I could mix those two, but uh, in that specific case, I would go more with the Easy Rider. Okay, there we go. And now I'm actually going to grab my smoothing brush and start brushing from the underneath first. So you can see how the hair springs back and creates a beautiful wave. So this was done on a medium iron and we let the hair cool down on clips. And you can see what I like to do is I really want to use the single brush strokes to go through the hair so it will all melt together and you can have a beautiful classy wave into the hair. One great idea also as you can see here is that if you feel like it's hard to go through the hair or the hair might tangle up a little bit you might want to go and pull the ends, sorry, <laughs> and pull the ends first because it, it is oil, so you might want to pull the hair and then brush, and that is going to make your life a lot easier if you if you are having problem with some tangling of the hair or some something like that. But as you can see here, I actually placed also one of my new favorites when doing the sets is to do hand gravity. And then I do another layer of uh, ever smooth on top. And just because that will create that extra sheen and have that beautiful bounce into the hair. So there you go. And how are we with the timing team? Should I speed up or are we still okay? We're great, Yuha. You've got we're at 40 minutes now. Okay, cool. Oh perfect. That's a perfect timing. So I will just continue. Brushing the hair through, and uh, I think one of the most important things that you can actually see here that if you did your base work and you're setting properly, you don't have to be afraid of the brushing of the hair because you can see that it will not fall down. It will just have that beautiful uh, separation in the hair. There you go, and as you can see. 
it has that beautiful sheen from the uh, ever smooth that we got and uh, it just works beautifully. So again, many times what I say to the clients or the people as well that you can actually pick up the head, not from the client of course, you can tilt the head back a little bit and then really go through the roots with your brush so you can melt all the sections of the hair together and you can see that you didn't miss my one spot of the sections. So here we go. So how do you like that one? I think it looks quite nice and we still haven't done any finishing products onto the hair. I think that looks rather nice, but what I would like to do now is do one of my favorite combos, which Kevin actually taught me, is uh, the usage of Session Spray Flex with a tail comb. And you know, because tail comb is made of a special plastic called POM, it actually prevents the frizzing of the hair and uh, really just binds the surface of the hair together. So you, Han, when would you choose to start brushing this out with a tail comb or a textured comb instead of the smoothing brush? Okay, so that's a really good question again. So many times I actually like to start with texture comb just because I can sketch the hair. And especially with the curls at a larger size, so I would go with the texture comb on the first set that we did, just for sketching of the hair. And especially if I'm afraid that I might actually pull too or put too much tension onto the hair, if I would be a little bit worried if the hair is not going to hold after, after the brushing or the uh, combing, if that makes sense. So yeah, but you can go back and forth and here again, sometimes when the hair starts to have a little snag, I might go and go on top with the texture comb. But you can see they all leave a very different finish onto the hair. Texture comb actually promotes definition and separation into the hair and uh, tail comb instead actually makes the hair come together so it will bring uh, more of an even or uniform surface. So what we could do now is just to use them both to showcase you that. So I'm going to use now my tail comb and as I mentioned I'm going to use uh, Session Spray Flex. So here we go. <laughs> so just a soft misting onto the hair and then I give it a couple of seconds. And then go on top so you can really see that it calms down the surface of the hair and takes all the frizz away like so i'll do it on the other side as well so now we are doing more of a smoother i would say more classic finish onto this set but then we're going to change it to something completely different in a second by switching our tools and uh, products. So there you go. So now I think we have a nice luxe finish for the hair. And now we have light shoulders for her as well. So what do you think? How does it look like for you? Maybe I could brush the ends a little bit more to so make it a little bit prettier still. But I think you will get the idea. So a very shine, shiny, frizz-free, smooth finish. But now that we really want to pump up the texture, uh, I'm going to go on by applying hair resort spray with a texture comb. And you can see the huge difference. So basically now what we are doing by using texture comb and not a tail comb is that we are not applying so much tension onto the hair. So the hair can actually spring back more. And now you can also see that your clients are model a little bit back again. So that their neck is going back because we, what is really important here is that we want the direction of the roots to change also and not only the surface of the hair. So now you can actually go and comb the hair 
so that the column actually follows the roots of the hair. And you can see already the change that it's doing um, to the hair. So really change the direction from the roots. It doesn't help if you just comb the surface of the hair, like so. And now, remember that you want to be completely satisfied with the finish of the hair before you apply any products because you don't want to seal in anything that you are not completely happy about. So now I'm completely happy about that. Let me see, of course, my hair is all plucked for a second. And you can see I'm using quite a bit of product, so you don't have to be afraid of using the products. And then what I like to do then is that I like to shake the hair a little bit. And as you can see, the wave just happens to be there. And then you can massage the roots ever so lightly, like so. And then I like to gather the hair in my hands like that. Just for the setting ingredients in Hair Result Spray to make their magic and really pull the hair back together and make the curls a little bit tighter. And there, you can see the difference in the finished end results. So you will have more definition and even it will encourage more shine into the hair. Maybe you can see better here, it's a better light. And you can see the bounce, so when the people or the model is walking down the street, sorry about the ends here. Oops. <laughs> That's beautiful, you have really, yeah. really, really beautiful. So nice bounce, right? So now she's up, and then we're gonna start with the other one. So this one was set on a half an inch iron. So you can really see the difference. So it's a much smaller iron. And I'm not going to do so many different finishes on this one, but just one of my favorite tricks that I always like to use. So now, because we want more volume and we want more expansion onto the hair, we're going to use do over. Just because if you remember, the ingredient that it contains is an ingredient called tapioca starch that actually makes the spaces between hair greater. So you can actually uh, bump up the volume and thickness of the hair in that way. So of course this takes a little bit longer time usually to set because again you can see on these sides for example I did four sections and the one difference now with this set is that it's all flat wrapped, it is not coiled. Because we want, um, I would say that if we coil the hair, when we go on this size of an iron, it will produce almost too much of a texture for the desired end result. So now I'm just going to brush the hair through with my smoothing brush. But at the same time, when the spaces between the hair are open, I'm going to spray some do over on there. So remember to shake, shake, shake again, really important. So we can get all the ingredients coming out in the right order. Now I'm just applying the product as I brush. It looks a little bit funny now, but let the product set. And then we move on from that later on. You really just want to get the product into between, in the spaces between the hair now. And let it dry before you touch the hair again. We're still in the frame, it's a little not so stable there. Try it, there we go. And then go on to the other side. And again, as you can see, I start from underneath because I have more control over of the sections now. And why I'm using brush here and not a texture comb is because I want to separate each and every hair from each other because that is actually going to create more volume into the finished result. So I think many times when you're setting already of course think about the finish that you want to create and then choose your tools and products accordingly. 
So again, here we want more volume and more expansion. So we're using smaller RN with a product that encourages expansion into the hair. So again, we're still a little bit cookie looking, but uh, this way is a bit longer. So what we're now, oh, we have 10 minutes left. I have to speed up now. <laughs> I just enjoy brushing hair so much that I always take a little bit longer than expected. So I'm really flying you when you're having you fun. You Sarah Lund is on and she has requested, can you use even more do-over? Yes, you can. You can use more do-over. And many times we actually like to laminate the hair with the do-over. So you can go um, and layer it on. What I would pay attention to though, when we use even more do-over, or what I like to do myself, is that I give it a second then. So for example, if you wanted to apply more do over here, I would still start again the same. Give it a second to dry. So you don't, the hair doesn't feel cool anymore. So you can really feel that it's product has dried and then apply another layer of product. And then you will have even more of an effect there. Okay, you can see anything there. But also what it encourages then is that you will get a little bit smoother effect, but also the expansion at the same time. But just to make it on time today, I'm gonna do only one layer and you can see, and of course, experience on your own then afterwards. Okay. And you can see how fast the product is to apply in the hair at the same time when you're brushing the hair open and uh, you will get a even distribution of the product in that way. Okay, now that the hair has actually is dried from the product, we'll start to brush from the sides back. And then just again pay attention that you're really going through the strand of the hair in that way. I'm gonna make this a little bit tighter so it doesn't move all the time. So again, brush the hair so all the hair separates beautifully. Encourage the volume into the hair. So now what you can see is just by changing the tool, the sectioning is still the same. Of course, a little bit smaller sectioning with a smaller iron, but the same direction towards the face. It all just works beautifully. So this would be more of your, I would say, a vintage wave if you would feel so. So a little bit more vintagey feeling there. And again, you can go of course again on top with your texture comb if you feel like you want to have a little bit less of a tension into the hair. There you go. And you can see already that it has a little bit more of a spring than with your usage of brush. And then again, because it is a little bit more vintage set, I would then encourage for you to use a session spray on the finishing of the hair. What's the best thing about session spray is that it has a memory quality to it. So again, when you brush the hair or comb the hair to the position, when you apply session spray, it has the memory quality. So when it's dried out, what you will see is that then you can start brushing and combing the hair and it will still have the hold. So we don't have to be afraid of the product making the hair too uh, hard or stiff. We have a little bit more light on the top of the hair. Let me see here, like so. 
so you can really see better. And again, now that it's dried out, then you can actually go and comb the hair, and then you will have that nice, beautiful shine onto the hair as well. A little bit more of the classic way, I would say. There you go. And then I'm gonna move her to the side. And then we're gonna bring back our first model that we started with. So the set with the larger iron that we didn't clip to cool, but instead left it to fall naturally. So now we can actually just start going through the hair with our texture comb because here I actually want that little bit of a separation to happen and uh, have that beautiful languid wave. So here you can see, of course, as well, when we go through the back, again, to single pass strokes onto the hair, and you can see that soft, beautiful wave appearing. Again, as we said, in the beginning it's important that the ends of the hair are always pointing towards the face because then you're going to have that beautiful keyhole face frame into the look. So there you go. And I think this can be a very nice, almost like a surfer uh, end finish onto the hair and just bring in that languid, beautiful wave. That is a very salon friendly as well, of course. Okay. And then I'm gonna go on again a little bit with my brush because I don't like so much separation. So again, go and really comb the hair to all the directions. Like so. And here, I would then like to use um, our shimmer, shimmer me blonde that you want to twirl, not shake a little bit. So again, remember not to shake, so it doesn't block, so we might have had a little bit of a problem of it plugging. Okay, now it's working, perfect. And then just go through, so that you brush the product into the hair. apply a little bit of touchable in the end but just so that we use our texture comb into the hair. We're being very quiet Tim, how are we going? <laughs> We're great you are, just I'm mesmerized by watching you brush the hair. Oh thanks Tim, <laughs> happy you like it. Okay so again I'm just uh, changing the direction of the hair Applying a little bit of touchable as a follow up, and you can see what it does to the hair already. So, I think it's always boils down to the choice of your tools and products. And just softly, you want to go through. Many people are always like, why would you even brush touchable because it's a spray, spray wax? But in my opinion, I think it adds that little something for the hair. So again, so now we have touchable in the hair. And as you can see, when you shake it, it even applies more expansion. And you have that beautiful flowy wave. I think that should look rather beautiful, what do you reckon? I actually have a little cheap mirror there so I can see how the hair looks like <laughs> because I don't want to showcase anything that I would be very happy with. I always like to pull the fronts a little bit down as well so it will have that frame around the face as we talked about. So there you go. So here are our 
three models. Maybe you can tell me, Tim, if you can see them. Let me see. Uh, yes, you have. Let me put this one here still. And then I want to brush her once more because I was a little bit haphazard when styling her. So I'm going to brush her once more and apply a little bit of product there. So again, you will see the difference in the, in the styling of the hair. Again, when you come to think about setting up the hair and your choice of, the choice of iron, if the hair is very long, I would always suggest that you take a little bit of a smaller iron just in case, because when the hair has more weight, there's a tendency to drop more. And when the hair drops more, you will have more of a stretch for your weight, of course, as well. So let's see. They look like three different three sisters, a little bit of a difference. <laughs> let's see if I can fix them all in the frame. With a slightly different finishes. Okay. Okay, so what do you think, guys? It's a little bit of our more vintage girl, the one with the softer wave, and the one with a little bit of a more of an expansion in the hair. So how does it look like? I think we it's went. Nice you, huh? Thank you so much, Tim. And I think that's basically all I wanted to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed it and. Uh, uh, yeah, practice, practice, and I think it's just a beautiful set that you can do. From one single set, you can do three different styles. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll uh, see you next time. Bye! <laughs>